Hey guys and welcome back to another video and the last video in the series of the team previews for the 2024-25 BBL Supercoach season in which we are doing the Sydney Thunder preview. A team that probably is not going to have the most uh, Supercoach relevant early given that they have, like the Hobart Hurricanes, a pretty horrific scheduling uh, but they could end, like I said, with, I think, the Hobart Hurricanes, or I should have said it at least. Um, they become one of the two most important teams in the back end of the season, I think, if I remember correctly. Just because, as you know, with their scheduling, they're one of the only, like, two or three doubles in the back end of the season. Um, yeah, they're one of two doubles in the back end of the season after round five. Only them and the Hurricanes have a double. And guys like from the Sydney, uh, so not from Sydney, from Adelaide and also the Melbourne Stars, the two teams that have two double games throughout the tournament, um, they become really, really irrelevant because they have a bye in the latter five rounds of the season, latter half of the season. So um, this one's probably just sort of one that isn't going to be the, become most uh, crucial of previews because we get to pretty much gauge these players and see who's relevant. Um, I mean, you'll know pretty much through um, how I talk about my trades, etc., who I'm sort of looking at, etc., or know who I'm targeting um, when they come up again. But anyway, let's just jump into this video, and then you'll see also at the back end sort of my predicted 11, which isn't... Um, I sort of need to figure out about Shafane Rutherford, probably a little bit more research about where exactly in the order. But you can sort of see my premise with um, how I've selected it, etc. So, Daniel Sands, he is a super coach uh, beast. I guess every season he goes really well. 55 in 23 24, 52 the year before that, 61 the year before that, and then uh, 68 the year before that. You can sort of see the premise here that we're not going to necessarily need, and 59 the year before that in 2018 19. So, we're not going to necessarily need to start him because. Um, he's probably in and around that full price, if not maybe 10 points, uh, within 10 points of his full price. But he doesn't have a double till, what did we say, round 6 was it? Um, yeah, round 6 is their double here against the Heat and the Hurricanes, which is a, it's an alright double. But you can also see, like, Thunder being probably not the greatest side. Um, these almost feel like when we do, like, the red and the orange and the green sort of sections... It feels like you have sort of a, a green one, a uh, green game here against the Hurricanes, a red one against the Scorchers, and another sort of reddish orange game against the Sixers. So, like, all in all, it doesn't feel good about the um, the the Thunder season. It's like they're going to become relevant in this game, but not in this game and this game here. So you, they're going to be relevant in probably round six and seven. Um, but like, how many do you really want on their double in this round here? Um, is the big question. Uh, but Daniel Sams, going back to him, he's an absolute beast and a guy that I think I have in batting seven. I think he's going to drop one spot in the order, which probably doesn't help him out exactly. But we've seen before that he doesn't necessarily need to contribute 200 runs or whatever with the bat. He contributed 100 last year, the year before that, 99. The year before that, 190. That was a massive campaign for him. In 21-22, 190 runs and also 19 wickets. Um, and 200 runs the year before that where he did really, really well. So if he just continues his bowling stocks, I have a feeling he'll do really, really well. Um, you can see here that would have been a 30-wicket campaign in like 15 games or whatever. Um, that would have been an absolute huge summary. Um, yeah, that would have been a huge campaign, the 1,000-pointer campaign in 18-19 or something, 19-20. 1,164 and an average of 68.5 is absolutely huge. Um, is that in 14 games or something? I'll just double check that for you guys there. 1,164 divided by 68.5 is 17 games that they had in that um, season there. Um, is absolutely huge. And so I think he's probably going to be in and around that 50-55 marker, which is absolutely huge. If those you can't see down here with the 162.8, you can see it up there as well. Uh, let me just place this back there. Anyway, um, there we go. Uh, you can see that there. So yeah, priced at, uh, priced at 54, projected it in around that marker. I think we get him for about 150, 160K, depending if he has a big, big game before his um, double game week. Uh, we get him in and around that price for his double when he when that props up. And you might be able to grab... He might be the one that you grab against the Scorchers, potentially. I don't know whether the Thunder will have 
maybe lose. I don't know whether what happens with Shafane Rutherford or whatnot. Um, as he might go by then. I'm not exactly sure with his availability per se. Let me just bring uh, this up here. Ch -ch 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 bookmarks. Uh, that's not that. Uh, let's see. So any West Indies o ODIs versus Bangladesh. Um, I'm pretty sure they selected that, didn't they? Because um, Fabian Allen, I'm pretty sure, was out. Uh, West Indies. Um, who are they playing? Ch -ch 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 -ch. West Indies uh, versus Bengal uh, T20 squad. Let's just check this. Announces T20 squad um, for test series. Okay, so that's the test squad, uh, warm-up squad, etc. Is Rutherford in this? Doesn't look like it. Okay, um, that's the test squad. Have they announced anything else here? This is a quick little um, double thing. Nope, doesn't look like it. Uh, announces suspension, etc. Modi. Um, let's just see. Have they announced West Indies T20 squad? Um, let's see this. Does this has this? Have they announced it yet? Um, West Indies squad. Is this the test squad? This might be the test squad. Um, yeah, this might be the test squad that they've only announced. So um, this is actually a little bit of a worry. If this is only the test squad and they actually haven't announced the. Um, the uh like t20 squad yet i don't think they have um in the last little bit yeah so we'll check that out if they when they do but yeah that's only the test squad that's been announced so um that'll be relayed to everyone saying that that's only the test squad we haven't got i haven't seen an odi or a t20 squad there and it would pop up i'm pretty sure very very um easily that i can even check on my phone on the west indies social media page um, to double check that and triple check that, but um, doesn't look like we've seen that uh, there for West Indies cricket um, that they've announced anything. Uh, so yeah, that's a little bit disappointing um, that they haven't announced anything with regards to the T20 squad because I thought they had um, done that, but it is what it is. Uh, there we go. Let me... Quickly check with the Windies Cricket if they've announced anything for their uh, tests. Any anything here? Nope, doesn't look like it. Um, so yeah, that's a that's a little bit disappointing. Um, Shafane Rutherford, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That must be in alphabetical order then. Um, Captain H H. Yeah, that's alphabetical order. Okay. It had Rutherford in a playing eleven at eleven. I was just like, that doesn't look right because he's a batter. Um, and a batter only, and 162.8, uh, sorry, that's Sam's, um, Shafane Rutherford at 152k, I just don't like it, to be honest with you, as a batter only, um, even keepers like Seifert at 152, um, Finn Allen at 152, just don't like that, pretty much, the good players are the Bethels and the, um, Fabian Allen at 117.5, that we just need to watch, um, and then, yeah, Lucky Ferguson at 152 is probably the only 152 that I'm considering, but if we just go back to the schedule here, you'll see um, New Zealand ODIs versus Sri Lanka. Um, unlikely Ferguson and Finn Allen. I'm surprised Finn Allen isn't in consideration for the T20 squad, given that I thought he'd be a really um, key player uh, for them. But that's sort of a little bit surprising. Um, but if he does get selected, which I haven't seen anything yet, could be uh, could come up in the future about that, um, then that it would be a little bit annoying. Uh, with regards to that um, there. Uh, then we go back to the page here. David Warner, 152K, no thank you. Basically the same premise as Rutherford. Even if he has a big campaign, you're probably going to see him average like 48, and he's priced at 51. Simple as that. You can see the projected there. Projected has him losing 6.7K. I wouldn't start him, and I wouldn't even um, have him in the double. Simple as that. Unless he's like 100, unless he's like 90K in the double, I wouldn't have him. Uh, Chris Green, he's another guy that I like to have in the Thunder Doubles just because he bats seven or eight and he bowls four overs and he's a really good fielder, one of the best fielders in the country. And that just gets him points. You can see 43.7 last year, 50 the year before that, 41 the year before that, and 39.9 the year before that, 37 the year before that. You can see there is constant scoring there. Um, hasn't really ever dipped and it's just because he is so multifaceted that he can just do it whenever he wants. Um, you can see out of his 393 points, 115 runs last year and only five wickets. 
um, in what, eight, eight, nine games, something like that. And then the year before that, 62 runs and 12 wickets, as well as 100 points in 10 catches and a run out that he got. As well as one thing I really also like about Chris Green is that he is a dot ball specialist. He loves to bowl dot balls. The year before that, he had 82 runs, um, six wickets, uh, 45 dot balls, and nine catches. So he's getting a catch a game at least, which is 10 points. That's a quarter of his points just there. And if he does have a really good campaign wickets-wise, that's when he really spurts. Um, and yeah, he's also involved in quite a few runouts as well, one or so per season. Tanvi Singer was the cash cow last year. If we look at his starting price last year, you will see it. 83k last year. This is why I'm in, on a similar boat with the likes of a um, Riley Meredith and Paddy Dooley. That's why I like it because you get these guys that are basically starting level players. Like he averaged 40 last year and we got him for 83.8. That is basically the premise that I want behind like a Riley Meredith or someone like that in the squad. Um, as you see here, the cash generation, 19K. Uh, that was a double to start, I'm pretty sure. 19K, then 15K, then six. So you already got up to 125 very, very quickly and then started to lose some cash. But you can see the premise there around um, he would gain some cash very, very quickly there um, and be a frontline player. Sam Billings, wicket keeper only at 113k, 114k. Should be there the whole tournament, I'm led to believe. Let me check. He leaves after the BBL to go to ILT20, which I'd suspect round six, that could be interesting. So yeah, a lot of what we're actually seeing here, given that this is the double for the Thunder here in round six, it's an interesting one. Because you see that it starts to Bangladesh Premier League, which is only Rashad Hussain, who's been out for the whole tournament. Um, New Zealand ODIs, we don't expect Ferguson to be selected there. Could be. Uh, South Africa, SA20, Bethel and Stoinis after BBL, or at least Stoinis after BBL. Um, and then you've got also, um, and then the ILT20 starts in and around that date. And you've got Ferguson, Rutherford, um, who are potentially going to go then. So... You don't want Ferguson. You don't want Rutherford. <laughs> that starts, and you'll see it when I go through the team uh, team lineup, you'll see in a second, that um, it starts to really open stuff up. And Billings going as well could potentially open up for these youngsters to play and be a big, big cash generator or just save some cash for getting those big end guys for the singles um, in the back end of the year. Um, and you'll see exactly what I mean when that I go into another strategy one or um, etc. down the line with BBL Supercoach. Uh, Bancroft, same similar the feeling with uh, the Billings type of saga. Oh, at least he's going to be playing the whole year. Simple as that. Um, but yeah, he's just going to be a batter only. And at 100k, we don't do that. Even if they are of the somewhat quality of Bancroft. Like Hales at that price, I start to go probably still, but maybe not. And Hales and like... That would be like Hales, Lynn, Munro that I'd start to go, yeah, at that price, I'd, I'd take a chance on you and probably the flex position type of role or an emergency role. Mick Andrew, um, I don't think he plays early, but the good thing is he might... Oh, sorry, he will play early. Sorry, it's Hatcher that I'm thinking about. Uh, Mick Andrew probably won't play early, but... Uh, sorry, he will. I keep on saying he won't, but he will. Um, but he yeah, he's probably their frontline bowler, and I think he's in for a bounce back here. He's been bowling really, really well in... He was bowling really, really well in county cricket in the UK last year, uh, in over the winter. And you can see that he had a breakout year in 22-23 with a 50-odd average, 51. But outside of that, he hasn't really been bowling too, too well in the BBL. Um, I think also with potentially in the double, he could get a, a big jump up the order potentially as well. Um, given that I'd suspect he bats in front of um, Will Salzman if they bring Will Salzman in. Cons just will bat in front of him, I suspect. But um, he's a new guy, so he could just nick off early or something like that. Probably not be uh, score the greatest amount of runs. So McAndrew could become a guy feasible in the double to grab up um, in their double. So just watch that space. Wes Agar, I think, probably won't play early. Is heavily discounted. 99.7k is in and around that sort of 30-odd, I think, price stat range. 33 break even. I don't think he plays early with the stars like Ferguson, etc. But he could um, get a run in uh, when they leave. And if he's priced in and around that 100k, he could be a go um, because he's averaged in the 40s before. He just had a shocker of a campaign in 23, 24. Um, outside of that, he's averaged 30s odd. But the annoying thing is he's priced at 32. Like he's priced at a discount, a massive discount from his 48.2. Uh, so he's almost priced basically just his 23-24 campaign off of his 22-23 uh, campaign. 
So they've almost taken 16 points off of it. Um, but I just don't think he's going to be valued early on. And we'll just have to wait to see if there's any change with the Thunder lineup. Because I think he's the next bowler off the rank. Oli Davies, probably about five, I would think, for the Thunder. Maybe six. I think five is the spot where he should bat. Um, and yeah, just not going to be valuable, I don't think, at 78k. Uh, Jason Sanger, um, 73k, and I just don't think he plays, to be honest. He also has injury concerns. I don't know what exactly that injury was that he got in that one day um, against, was it New South Wales? Um, but yeah, it was like an elbow or something. Um, but yeah, just don't expect him to play. Same thing with Liam Hatcher. Just think he's behind Wes Agar, who is behind... Um, the likes of Ferguson, Sams. Sams is a watch as well in case he doesn't play. We haven't seen him in Prem Cricket, I don't think, until maybe this weekend. The weekend just gone, which is a good sign if he was back like that of Hayden Kerr. But let me quickly just check that uh, with him playing for, I believe, Randy Peets. But I don't know if he plays the longer format games. But we'll just quickly check here if he did end up playing for Randy. Uh, Randwick Peterson... Um, it doesn't look like he was back playing, I don't think. Uh, no, he was, actually. He scored 24, uh, but just wasn't back bowling, which it's a good sign that he was back batting, but not the best sign that he wasn't bowling, I would say, just looking at that quickly. Yeah, it wasn't back bowling um, in their game on the weekend um, that they lost to Hawkesbury. That is a, that's a big collapse there to lose to Hawkesbury like that. Um, but, yeah, so... Uh, Wes Agar would come in probably for Daniel Sams, and then you'd see Liam Hatcher be the next one off the rank, but I think Daniel Sams, with four weeks to go, will probably be still a buy. And it could be good that he almost only comes back to bowling, like two or three weeks into the BBL, as his price would um, skyrocket down. Uh, Gilks, I think he's the backup backup keeper. Maddo, um, I have him currently batting. Um, batting three, I think. Could also open, depending on Bancroft, etc., because I think Warner will open. But he's also potentially just value at um, at 58.5. He's priced at 20. Um, and 20, you know, as a batter, it is in an... It, there is just... If you get off to a good start, um, he could easily beat that. All he needs is one or two good knocks. So he could just be a bench guy that you have that just hope that you make some cash gen off of it. Because say we have here this 21.3 campaign. And then the year after, he started well, well um, up actually. I'm trying to find a campaign where he started low and he ended, um, he started at 78 in 21, 20, 20, 21, and he ended at 97.9. If I go to that campaign here in the, here we go, um, you'll see that he got up to the, yeah, he got up to 104 um, in that campaign and then went, started to come back down. So you can see that he does, um, he does have the ability to, uh, make cash gen even as a batter which batters do tend to struggle just a little bit making cash gen um so that is a good sign with him as well that he can actually make some cash but we saw last year's price at 87 um that he actually lost cash because he was having a horrific time with the bat um and only played a couple games but he's one guy that i would be probably willing to risk over these guys like salzman and constance to be honest with you who are 20k cheaper Constance probably doesn't get a game, I would suspect, until some of the batters leave. But he's a he, he's a decent prospect. I just don't think he's probably made as much for the T20 format compared to guys like Ollie Davies, etc., who are have been in and around the system for four five years, etc. And then Solzy could actually get a game, I think, here um, later down the line when they start to lose players to all the other tournaments as they come out of their uh, the BBL comes out of its sort of prime time window. Uh, so Salzman could get a game late um, and at that point you probably don't want him to get a game because then he comes in next year at like 58.5 um, instead of potentially having just one good game and getting a jump up to like an 80k you probably just want him to hold it at the base rate uh, but anyway there it is and then we just quickly go to the BBL um, the schedule here and then we go to the Sydney Thunder I'm actually running later on this one than the other ones Warner and that was probably just the Google searches that they did Warner and Bancroft <coughs> Excuse me, Warner Bancroft and Manitson top three. Rutherford um, fourth. I don't know exactly where Rutherford bats, to be honest with you. If he opens the batting, then Bancroft just bats four. Um, if he bats later, like five or six, then probably Billings just jumps up to four. That sort of 
Davies at five and also Madison at three, Warner at one are sort of just the blocks that I have set in stone. And then Bancroft and uh, Bancroft, Rutherford and Billings sort of move around. Billings at six, you see there. Sam's at seven. I think that's pretty common. I think he was batting six last year, but I think seven now with the depth of Rutherford, Madison and more so Warner. Uh, or a more uh, Warner more available, I would say. Um, that added to that will help them out. Uh, Ferguson at eight. Well, these are sort of actually should be green. Then Mick Andrew, and then Tampa saying I know Ferguson. We'll just do that. There we go. So that would be the order to be honest with you. Just looking at it quickly, and you can see green at eight and Mick Andrew at nine. These why these guys are probably the most um, highly owned in the double. Uh, in that of Sam's Green and McAndrew because they have that 7, 8, 9 lower order hitting where they can get a 20 off 8 and it's suddenly like, well, they just got 40 odd points and then they add a wicket with the ball um, as well as, say, 5 or 6 drop balls and an, a small economy rate bonus. And what's that? Uh, 40 points with the bat, 20 for the wickets, uh, 5 to 10 dot balls and, fi and 5 or 10 points with the economy rate bonus. That's uh, 10, 30 say 35 and 40 with about, that's suddenly a 75, add maybe a catch in the field and they're suddenly out to an 85 off little work, a 20 off at, a twenty off um, 8 or 10, something like that, and a 1 for 20 off 2 with the ball or 1 for 10 off 2 with the ball, something like that, or even 1 for 30, sorry, 1 for 30 off about 4, something like that, and suddenly they're on 85. That's how simple it is. Tempe Sanger and Ferguson uh, ran out the team, and that's how I have it. And then these are sort of the bench players that are all just stacked together. I haven't bothered to filter it by price because I don't have another. You can only have one filter, so I couldn't filter the actual uh, these guys here in this reserves. But anyway, that rounds out um, the BBL Supercoach um, sort of team previews for each and every side with the Sydney Thunder now done. Um, and then, yeah, you'll see probably updates to this uh, Google Sheet file that I haven't shared just yet. Um, there will be pretty much a big update, I think, whereas um, probably condense all the teams into one big uh, sheet, all the team uh, predicted 11s. So you would have all that. Um, and then you'd have um, probably an all players tab. Um, that's probably what I'm gonna run with so that I can actually access all of the tabs very much easier rather than this, what I have currently. But anyway, if you did enjoy that um, longer-ish video on the Sydney Thunder and my thoughts about it, remember to like and subscribe, turn the notification bell on so you know when I upload. And if you are watching along on, or listening along, I should say, on Spotify, remember to give me a follow so that I, you know when I upload. And I can see that you guys are also um, listening on, on there. So I guess I will see you guys tomorrow for, I think, a news update. It'll probably be a shorter-ish video, but it a lot has happened in the last... Uh, 72 and 96 hours or so on BBL Supercoach. So it's made some of what I said on these um, previews irrelevant, but I'll just give you an update, etc., on all of that and with the new players coming in, etc., replacement players, and I'll give you those updates tomorrow. So I'll see you guys in that video. Bye, guys.